So you do my usual thing, rolling a die. I got Lane. Uh, Lane, what happened last time? All right, last time we, let's see. I remember where we ended. I don't remember where we started, but uh, we were going to see, last time we were getting ready to go see the Baron, right? The Baron. Uh, Baron uh, Edric or whatever. Um, and then, but first we went to the, does that, is that when we went to the, the, uh, church again? Oh, it's all, I remember again, sorry, I'm just trying to get back into it. Um, I'm looking at my notes too. My brain's gone. But, uh, well, you did go to the temple. You're right. Actually, I actually, we did go to the temple. Forgot about that. Okay. And is that where we learned that? Um, you and yeah, you and Alara snuck sister, into it, right? Sister Greta, we we had it with Sister Greta. Turns out is gone to Rebic, right? And it turns out we found out that she had a uh, long past history with the the Countess Rebic, Countess Yestra, yes. Um, who turns out was childhood friends of Sister Greta, and they've been corresponding. And Sister Greta has left is to go to Rebic to see, possibly to see her old friend the Countess. And turns out, Sister Greta may have actually been somewhat plotting against the Duke or the the Baron. Uh, although it seems maybe for the good of. Griff's bluff and everyone. She seemed to have good intentions, maybe. Uh, but she did seem to be plotting against the Baron with the Countess, possibly. Um, maybe in opposition to the findings of good intentions that I just assumed. We also found a demonic book or a book of deep demonic magic. Did you, uh, were you able to read it? I can't remember. It was a heretical text uh, from ancient queens of the kingdom of man, maybe, and dealing in anthropomancy and demon summoning. And you were able to read uh, it. Yeah, because of my uh, my thieving magical or not non magical language skills. Not enough that I could learn any spells from it necessarily, although at 10th level I can cast spells. Scrolls, so who knows? Maybe someday. Uh, that's pretty high level stuff, though. But you know, it did have some stuff about demon summoning, and so I did have some notes that we have at least some tips on handling demons. So cut off whatever their ambition is, get a true name from them, um, and you can't kill them, but we can maybe banish them. And I think maybe we we said we'll table that possibly, and if we get some, it might be useful later when we go to that tower to try and deal with that demon problem and maybe at some point we can recruit somebody who's maybe more skilled in the magical arts and that before we do that but that's all uh just postulating but anyway that was the first big stuff i believe and then we did go to the evening uh at the to have our uh visitation with the baron and it turns out it was a whole shindig there's Lots of people trying to get the Baron's favor for an audience, and they're let's see the our halfling friend or little hobbit friends and the dwarf were kind of uh, objects of attention for sure amongst all those people. And I believe we did have some some success in getting at least one lady interested in uh in uh. Brandon's for Brent. Um, I can't remember how we convinced her that it would be uh, it was worth doing, but I think we, we did get some interest in um, at least some sort of merchant opportunities for some nobility going that way. Um, and then also determined that just before our audience, we were set to be introduced to the Baron. Uh, we also seem to notice that there are some... Uh, 
somebody's trying to break into the Baron's private chambers. And uh, Ben and uh, our, um, and, and Lara, we're kind of staking out the chamber where we know that they, because I believe Earl Lara's elven keen senses overheard them talking about breaking into and stealing something from the Baron's chambers. We kind of st staked out the area to see if we can get them on the way out. And it's like, oh, wait a second. Their thief, whoever it is, is probably going to be more circuitous than that. And I think that's... And then we were decided, we were told, hey, your audience is here. It's time to meet the Duke. And I think that's where we left it. So it was a little bit of a, is everybody going to meet the Duke? Or are we going to try and stop this thief, maybe? I can't remember exactly where we left it, but I believe it was just before our audiences. Yeah. The big event. I agree. I think that's, I think that is all correct. Um, I will also note, I, I kind of made a mistake. Um, I had, I'd missed that you translated it, which is kind of silly. Uh, and I imagine it's something like, you probably can't perfectly read it. I mean, you're a thief, so it's not mm -hmm. like you can magically understand the language or something. It's just like, maybe if I were to pick up Latin or French, like I'd be, I could be like, you know, it has the same base proto-language, and I could make out what it's talking about, you know. But right. being able to actually use it or employ it, I think that's actually a feature at a certain level. You can use scrolls, right? Yeah, I think it's 10th level, if yeah. I remember correctly, which that's is crazy kinda... high, like, it's basically never gonna happen right that's like that's some high level stuff yeah well, i think that's part of the tenth level yeah i think that's part of the reason we held on to it too is we were like well maybe we can find someone who can translate better if they can keep a secret yeah um like i can get the gist of it but i'm not going to be able to use it for much more than knowing you know some basics um, and what it's about but as far as the spells and actual demon and control stuff yeah i'm not gonna be able to do that for sure for those familiar with uh, the lore, you might not like this. However, I will be honest with you and tell you what the title of this book is because uh, it is a real book in the world. <laughs> it's a lore object, uh, so it has a um, uh, it has a stated title. It says um, the Demonomicon of Igwilv, Volume Five. Ooh. Hmm. Um, and you're able to try to suss out that there are kind of two major parts to it that it talks about. One is anthropomancy, and the other really focuses on this idea of the name, the true name of a thing. Mm -hmm. And if you if you can name something, you have power over that that thing. Um, and uh, she, you can tell she talks about demons a lot. Uh, since that seems to be the entire purpose of this volume of knowledge, after all. So, all right. So, um, yes, uh, you all are. Uh, at the keep, at uh, Baron Edric von Hillsborough's keep. Um, and... Uh, It's uh, it's up to you. Um, it's up to you if you want to um, have um, Helmer um, kind of do the audience with the Baron, uh, and then you all try to hunt down what's going on in his room. You could try to do that, or you could just all attend this audience. Hmm. I think I brought up two, but I didn't know if it was a good idea um, with Ben's character at the end of last time. If I try to use my uh, friend charm on the Chamberlain himself uh. to figure out what he's up to. Um, I guess it would depend on his intelligence level, what my likelihood of that is. Yeah, I will say that the risk of doing that, and you're, you don't like. Alara does not know this, but the risk is that if you attempt that, you might know. 
and be able to respond accordingly. Um, but uh, the the benefit is you could succeed, of course. Yeah. Well, it's we're in court, so if it's true stuff, we could be running out of here pretty quick. And that's why I was like, well, maybe we shouldn't. I don't know. That's a yeah. serious repercussion. <laughs> So time is running out is, um, as far and I I'll also say you can tell that uh, the what do you call it a plaintiff uh, the person presenting a petition to the Baron currently is a, uh, a nobleman a landowner that owns land along the pilgrim road you can hear him talking and saying that there's an urgent need for forces to reinforce the pilgrim road because uh, pilgrims are going missing and he relies on the trade and the purchased items that are made uh, and items that are sold to pilgrims along the way with his way wayfaring um, inns and shops and traveling merchants and stuff that he manages uh, in his land um, and uh, pilgrims are disappearing and uh, He's begging for forces to, to reinforce the East. And the Baron is responding with with saying that they're, you know, stretched as thin as they are. And, you know, and there's a potential threat to the West with Rebek and um, goblins to the North and all this sort of stuff, you know. And, and so he's trying to assure this landowner that he'll do what he can. That's what you hear them talking about. But... Uh, their audience ends, and you're called. Um, from there, you can you can split up. Um, you can even totally split up, and Lara, you can try to intercept the Chamberlain and see you know if you can gain his you know friendship. Mm. Or from a formality standpoint, are we all expected as a group? I guess I for court so. etiquette to be present. Or is it acceptable for some of us to kind of you know, disappear? I think that yeah. they don't really know you all, right? Like, there's not really... You're not really well established as a courtesan. So, they don't really are court, 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 courtesan, yeah. Courtier? Um, courtier? courtier? Yeah. Is that the right word? Sorry. Uh, anyways. Maybe, I don't know. You're not... You know, this is your first time in this court, so they don't know. Would our elf stand out as an elf? Would he be expecting the elf though? I have my hood up, and I'm trying okay. not to draw attention, so... I think everyone in this place knows that there's an elven ranger at this point, because everybody was just, like, amazed by it. And they wanted to ask Alara everything. Hmm. Alright, I guess moment of truth, I... I've been going back and forth on whether I need to investigate this. There's like, there's another thief. Kind of want to go check out this, see if I can get the Chamberlain's man and not, and, you know, catch him red-handed. But it's my concern is, is it like a wild goose chase, or did what he still have direct implications to our quest? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so... Uh, oh, and does someone want to take the... Who was the group caller last time? I need, really need to write this down better. Uh, you get extra I think it XP. Was me last time? I think it was me last time. I yeah, think you're right. Okay. I think it was. It was. And then before that, it was... Birdie. So, it is Lane's turn. It's Ben as the group caller. So, um, what's it to be? Is it... Um, you're going to try to chase down this person, and then I suppose, Alara, do you want to help and aid in the audience with the Baron, with Helmer, or do you want to try to intercept the Chamberlain? I wonder. I don't really want to mess up the thing with the Baron because we kind of need that and our group was kind of counting on that. Um, 
So either assist Ben or keep an eye on the Chamberlain to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. <laughs> Which one do you want to do? Or in case the thief doubles back and tries to give it to the Baron. Or not Baron, um, the... Uh... Where is the Chamberlain? Is he in the room with all the people schmoozing? He's not currently here. Hmm. So he left the room? Or he's... Yeah. So... Did we was he here earlier? Is that where we heard him talking to the guy? Well, the or did, yes, well, yes, he was talking to the thief. guard. So I he's think. now off by himself. So we know he was break. He was planning on robbing the Baron for something, and now he's not around. I think we need to go to the Baron's quarters and make sure he's not meeting a thief in front of him. Very well. Uh, how do you all do it? Let's see. Before, was it, was Bertie, or was Alara keeping watch and I was sneaking over there? Yeah. Is what we were doing. I was kind of keeping an eye out with the intent to, since I'm kind of celebrity status, um, anyone that comes by, maybe. You were going to distract and kind of give me a heads up if somebody started walking in on yeah. me while I was walking Just kind in of on the speaking a little, little louder so you can hear me conversing with someone to let you know someone's coming. Yeah. Well, if it's time for our audience, how much do we want to split? We only have, how, how much are we going to split the party? I think we got to make a choice. Elmer's going to see the Baron. I'm going to try and catch a thief. So I got that you are going to try to capture the thief and Alara is going to help, but what's the plan? What's the play? How are you going to try to get into his room? Yeah. Do we know where is, do I know how to get to his room? Do I know where is that? Can I, well, where is it you do know matter? that it's upstairs and you know, this door leads to it. But apart from that, no, you're not sure. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think Ben's going to sneak upstairs. Uh, Does Alara so here's come something, with me? Or you, here, here's something mm -hmm. you could do. Now, there's a guard here right now. So you do have... Um, you are a thief. And being a thief, you can... I think it's called uh, Hide in Shadows. Mm -hmm. Um you can basically almost supernaturally attempt to disappear. The downside yeah. is that it is very hard for you to do that. Yeah, have to be motionless. Attacking or moving while hiding is not possible. Yeah. It says that? That sucks. Yeah, that's what... So hide in shadows makes me... I have to be motionless. Move silently, attempt to sneak past enemies unnoticed. Is a separate okay. ability. Okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, move silently. Either way, I have, I know uh, that is very unlikely for you to succeed. Now, if you're caught, uh, it's a very good chance they will attempt to arrest you and put you in the dungeon. Yeah. Um, if I were to try to distract the guard, would that aid his chances? It would aid it. Uh, the effectiveness There's of aiding it would depend on how you're doing it. Yeah. You know, there's a lot that can go wrong. Maybe we just see the Baron. <laughs> Caution, better part of valor and all that. I'm so curious where the Chamberlain went. <laughs> yeah, I know. Go back. Oof, I, I don't want to, I don't want to bury the, I, I, can I throw a, an idea out here? Can I do that? By all means. You're a thief. You don't have to go through the front door. <laughs> you know, here's here's where I had a really terrible idea. If I could sneak away from the crowd, and if there's a window, I'm really good at climbing. Ten percent chance I die, though. But <laughs> yeah, that's where I think you can do a little more like Metal Gear Solid, Assassin's Creed level stuff as managing the attention. Like, but there's a dude standing right in front of this door, and I'm not saying you yeah. can't succeed. I'm just saying that. There's a chance you could fail, right? And uh, but mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, you can climb walls pretty good, and people don't tend to just hang around on walls. Um, 
Yep. So is there? Let's see. So um, we know it's up. He's it's a upstairs. Are there any windows nearby? With it around any corner? Did I remember any? Mm, this is the well, question: Is how do I sneak a, out and climb up? This uh, this entire structure is a is a castle, uh, essentially a mm-hmm. keep, a stone keep, and uh, this is the inner postern. Is that the right term? The the inner. Or is it Bailey? Whatever. This is the inner po- portion where the um, where the uh, uh, what's it called? Um, hold on. The the hall, the the feast mm-hmm. hall. So this is where he keeps an audience. Um, it's like a little castle within a castle, and you came into the courtyard on the way in. So like you know, imagine like this big wall, and then you have a courtyard, and then you have a little like a castle that's vertical on the inside. And you're inside of it, so the wall. There, is, there are windows, uh, but um, uh, the way to the second floor would be outside. Um, right. Yeah. I'm just trying to find a window to get to that without being seen at this ah. point. Interesting. So, if there's a, if I'm trying to recall any windows, I could, I could find that would be out of sight of the crowd, where I could slink out and then. You know, knowing the lay of the land, then climb up to where I know the second floor should be in theory. If it's directly above where I'm at now. Yeah. Um, when you look around here, the, all of the windows are kind of, and this is kind of actually, by the way, I should have mentioned this, they're narrow, stained glass, beautiful windows that are fairly Mm -hmm. high up. It's meant to be somewhat ostentatious. Right. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Tell you what, I know you're going to try to break into his chambers, so you can come up with a thiefy plan for it. Um, Yeah, yeah. Alara, are you going to accompany him um, or do you want to stay with Helmer? Or do you want to n- do neither and kind of stay in the crowd and watch? Try to watch, you know, and, and be eyes and ears for anything that might be happening. I would probably ask Ben if he needs a lookout or how he can best aid. And I'd also want to be in a spot not only where I could potentially aid him if he needs it, but also keep an eye on things. All right. So you'll go with with uh, Ben. I'm going to put you all in a separate token and then uh, kind of move you all around separately. The southern token here. Um, I'll give a status effect of like... Um, um, something like this just so see that's different okay so I'll pan over to Helmer it seems it falls to Helmer uh, a a paladin and knight of the realm of the of one of the holy orders of the church of the thrice blessed uh, knight errant uh, young and on his uh, on his journey uh, kind of like a pilgrimage to um, well as a knight errant to to make his name and uh the things you have seen along the way. So, they announce you all uh, as the Elderman of Brandonsford. Which is a little ironic because the one, the two people that are not, you know, one is Helmer. Uh, but, Nob, Squints, and Tharnwin are with you. And so, you have you hear this, uh, this audience ahead of you, uh, you know, trying to ask for more forces in the east to secure the pilgrim's road he sort of presents it as a religious duty the uh <clears throat> the baron seems sympathetic and um and um deeply troubled um when uh when you're brought before him so um He's sitting kind of like in this, you know, court, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a seat of authority. I think I imagine like a layered 
where you know you come and you, you come for the the seat and everything. And what do you do? Now, right, well, he, Knob is going to bow really sanctimoniously, like way down. S- bangs his head on the floor kind of stuff. Hel- Helmer also kind of does the uh, the courtly courtly bow. Um, not quite as deep, but mostly because he's a little too rotund. Um, and then uh, clears his throat and holds his hand out in the, uh, like the, the, the speaking gesture and goes, uh, Lord Baron Hillsborough. My name is Helmer of Westenel, over yonder. I'm a paladin and knight errant, the thrice blessed of no true renown. I've wrote all this out, so I'm not coming up this off my head. Oh, nice. <laughs> At the request of the Thane of Brandonsford, given the responsibility of Thane by the peoples of Brandonsford for defense against, and I say this upon my honor, a great black dragon who I myself did witness the aftermath of this battle, slain by the sword of Sir Brandon, wielded by these very companions I am ordered to travel with, travel with. Sir Benjamin the Swift, Sir Edward the Bold, and Lady Alara the Eagle Eye. I say, my lord, these, uh, my lord Baron, these things not to boast of these deeds, but to express the necessity of your aid. Brandonsford, from whence flows golden ale the likes of which you have never tasted, has been left defenseless, its wall shattered by this mighty attack of this beast. Lord Baron, we do not request your aid, but do humbly bag it, and he kept, like, he actually, like, like bows really low. Of the people for this Brandon's Ford. Will you, Lord Baron, help these noble and gracious people? And he just kind of, like, he's, he's like, like, kneeling, and, like, really, really low. Um, it's interesting, because, um, you had, you've sort of revealed something to him that was mentioned before, uh, he says, Greetings, uh, Sir Knight, uh, he, he actually stands up and comes down to you, um, and, uh, uh, reaches to shake your hand, uh, and he, he says, please rise, uh, uh, Sir Helmer, uh, it's good to see a brave young man, uh, in, in, in our service of, uh, of, of the evening lands, I, it, well, it reminds me of myself <laughs> when I was young. I still remember it as if it were yesterday, to be honest. The days when I was a knight errant and I myself was out uh, on, a jer- on a journey to prove myself. Uh, 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 and then he sees the two hobbits and he's like, I don't believe I've been introduced to these uh, fine people, though. Uh, I don't know, because I don't think you mentioned Nob, Squints, and Thornland, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, he and he's like. Oh, I forgot about Tharlin. I was I, I had purposely left out the the Hobbit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the, fir- the first thing he does. He goes and he's like, "Wait a second, Hobbits." Yeah, and so he um, he's like, D- "With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking?" Um, and uh, Nob is like, he bows again, like really like, ridiculously, uh, and then has Squints do it too. Uh, I'm uh, Nob Boulderhill, and this is Squints, and we're from Brandonsford, and uh, this is our friend Tharnlin. Uh, he's from Carnbildar. And, uh, and the Duke says, My, um, two hobbits? I have not seen a hobbit since I was a young lad. Um, I was aware that Brandonsford existed, but I'm sad to say I've never gotten to travel there. And, uh, well, uh, Master Dwarf, I have been to Carnbuldar, in fact, several times in my life. And uh, Tharnland's like, I, I'm aware of that, my lord. And uh, he smiles, the Duke smiles, uh, or the Baron, sorry, and he says, Yes, uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was the alliance of our people that put back the Unmen from the east and held them across the river and put an end to the war against the traitor. But I know you know that well. If it were not for the dwarves, this land would have perished and all the people in it. And uh, you can tell the effect that this has on Tharnlon, that, you know, he's sort of saying what Tharnlon wants to hear. Um, and... Uh, uh, so he says... Uh, he says... Uh, uh, two hobbits, uh, are, are you 
You're Elderman of Brandonsford. Are you... Are you the Thane? Uh, you know, because he thinks, you know, obviously <laughs> they'd come and speak to him. And so he's directly asked this by Nob, and Nob says, uh, I, uh, um, Baron Hillsborough, I am, uh, or at least was, and so always hold the title of Thane. Thane of the Commonwealth. And there's like the whispering and stuff, you know, among everybody here. And uh, he says, well, no one announced that a, uh, uh, a noble would be entering my court. And then he like bows actually to Nob. And this pleases Nob in a, in a way that, you know, you haven't seen. And the Baron says, uh, well, um, I, I would like to hear of Brandedsford then. The best ale, you say? So we're at a character. We brought some, didn't we? Yeah, don't you have some in a Yeah, we've, mode we've got some. No, we got. I think we brought like two casks. Didn't we bring like two kegs of... I don't remember that, but I believe you. You're the treasure oh. keeper. Goodness, I don't think I had that written down, but I'm pretty sure... I pinned uh, somewhere in chat. It's like updated um, record keeping of treasure. Somewhere up there you have um, when you did it. When you had like all the stuff that you have, but you oh, lost yeah. a bunch of stuff at one point. So yeah, yeah, we probably lost. It would have been in the in the uh... wagon. Yeah, I think you filled your pockets and ran from the wagon. Yeah, unfortunately. got the okay. Uh, yes, Lord Baron, the the finest ale I have come across in my days. Uh, we had had some, but badly in the on the road. Uh, it was lost. And not by our own doing. <laughs> I forgot something. Um, the weather is bad outside. I forgot to mention this. Uh oh. Don't. You can't. I <laughs> I'm not making this up. I'm serious. I literally I forgot. And from now on, I'm going to oh, say that, that at the. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do choice? the. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing I do with other world, and I'm gonna start the session. I'm gonna say. It is the ninth of good month. Your twenty-fifth day of adventuring as the adventures of Perinval in the evening lands, uh, at least for Edward and Ben. There are thunderstorms outside. Uh, it is forty-two degrees Fahrenheit, and it will probably be freezing at night. There are severe winds and cold rains and high winds. Never mind. I ain't climbing on it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I want to know. Winds and there's also really poor visibility. Um, so I'll probably give you a penalty uh, to your check, but also no one's going to see you. So that's kind of the bargain I make on that. Anyways. Uh, back to Homer. Yeah, back to Homer. Uh, he says, um, um, and these, these storms are gathering before this happened, and then since you've been here, you could hear it starting to beat on the walls outside. And he says, "Wow, well, that is uh, that is truly tragic. I, I would very much have liked to have enjoyed that. Perhaps someday I can I can enjoy, um, the, enjoy the ale of Brandonsford, like, uh, and perhaps freely so. But what is the? You ask for aid because of a dragon." Yes, indeed, Lord Baron. Uh, a great black dragon had ravaged the area, uh, but it was slain uh, by, uh, by Sir Edward here and, uh, and his companions. Uh, so, uh, Lord Thalen, uh, uh, Nob, Squints. Uh, I, much to my uh, disappointment, I, I was not present for this battle, but arrived <laughs> before the fires had gone out. <laughs> I had arrived down the Pilgrim's Path um, where I had managed to discover the uh, very grave of uh, Sir Brandon himself. Uh, was I did not discover it myself, but found that it was indeed in this, this area. Um, but yes, the walls to this place, ancient walls built by the dwarves and Sir Brandon and his uh, companions long ago were shattered by this attack. That's uh, extraordinary. It's like one of the tales of my youth. It is like the tale of Brandon himself. Who slew the dragon? 
Um, and I think at this I could speak for, for Edward because I don't think he's ever been trying to hide it. He says, Indeed, my lord, if you'll permit me. Um, and he, he like shows his hands to everyone here in a you know, non-threatening <laughs> way. And he, he slowly draws out the blade and he says, This, in fact, was the, the thing that slew the worm itself. This is the blade, the very sword of Sir Brandon. And um, everyone is just enraptured by this. Like, everybody loves this crap. Everybody's paying attention to this now. You all have an audience. And um, so, yeah, you you tell him the stories of, you know, how you'd fought the dragon and the goblin armies and everything that had happened and stuff. And and he's like, that's extraordinary. One of the, the shrines of our our holiest saints was has been held uh, by, by your people, um, Thane. Knob Boulder Hill, uh, and to that for that, I want to express our gratitude. Uh, for it is a thing that has been lost to us for a long time, and that is something else I would dearly wish to see someday. And the blade itself, he doesn't reach for the blade or ask to see it or anything. This is a uh, this is extraordinary, and now this this lovely place of of hobbits is threatened by the same scourge of goblins to the north that we face. And on the front lines, no less, in a way. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to pan the camera over to you all. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, what, uh, what is the plan with Alara and Ben? It's certainly true that everyone is paying attention to this audience now. Uh, but, you know, the guard is still on guard, of course. All right. Do we slink out without being seen? I'm still trying to find where an exit would be that would gain access. I guess we can try around this corner. Sir. Does the weather north? affect your ability to climb? It, oh, I'm sure it will. So, is is this when we leave this room? Are we outside in the courtyard now? Yeah. Or yeah, so now I can see that we're standing in the rain, essentially. So yeah, it's really simple. The, here's there's a plus side and downside. So as soon as you leave, uh, so these you have these. Uh, I wish I remembered my medieval terms, but um, say it confidently, uh, and I'll believe you. Battlement, I can't remember, but basically you have like the things that have the arrow slits on the, the mm -hmm. edges of the entrance, um, uh, the kind of towers, and um, you can see from the corner of that, there are windows up on the second floor, and um, they're obviously closed, but it would not be impossible, especially knowing right now that the room is vacant, or at least... If it's not vacant, it doesn't have the Baron in it, and probably somebody trying to steal something. So you know, you can see it. You can see it where you're at. Uh, and the really good news is, it is so utter, such utter chaos out here that you're confident that you could probably sneak up there. Um, and I, and the way I'm doing it is like, if you guys work as a team, then Alara, you you can go with him too. You know, but like you do the elfy things and he does the thiefy things, if that makes sense. Um, so <clears throat> I would give an, I would give a negative modifier to your climb to your surfaces check. Makes sense. I don't suppose any, yeah, any elf magic can make weather, make it stop raining, right? We wouldn't be that lucky. Um, the okay. closest would be shield, but I don't know if that works on rain. What? You have magic shield? Yeah, I have. I have two spells. I have Charm Person and I have a shield, which works on missile attacks. So if we count the rain as a missile attack, yeah, no, <laughs> with I, clouds. I will. Um, <laughs> I, I I think you can. And it only does for me. So if I'm climbing above him, my <laughs> shield would theoretically nothing would fall below me. Yeah, and he'd be fine. No, I'll, I'll say you can do that. <laughs> the downside is you're going to lose your spell for the day, right? Like, um, um, I. I'm thinking I only get one spell for a day. I had trouble finding that note. So. Yeah, no, I, I got it right here. Uh, but I think maybe you have more. It might be like two. Uh, but, you, you know, you don't have many spells. Let's see, an elf at low... You're level three? Or level um, two? 
I should see. I need to find the level chart again to see if I leveled up yet. If well, you're I know I'm a two. Yeah, you're yeah, probably you, level okay. two. You, you started. So I'm a level two. Okay. Yeah, you have two level one spells. So you, you, you're right. You have shield and you have charm person. So you're going to lose shield. But I, I love it. Uh, I think you can basically like climb next to him and hold up the shield. But then it's going to go out as soon as you make it there. And you still yeah. have to actually pass the climb sure surfaces check. If you fail, both of you will fall and other things might happen. <laughs> if yeah. you pass, well, you will make it. Well, I shouldn't say that. All right, so we're pretty sure I'll point that win that's our window. So, Alara, the, I, again, the way magic works in this setting is, like, it's not like you have, like, a zip-zop, bang-boom, like, magic shield. It's not like that. It's probably, like, you know, as you start climbing, you say something su subtle in Elven or Elvish or something, and then it just seems as if the rain, it's almost like you're undercover, but you know that you shouldn't be, as if the winds shift off of you. Like, we're under a it's bubble. subtle, Yeah. It's just An real invisible subtle. bubble. All right. Start climbing and uh, like, all right, put your hand there. <laughs> Try and... I'm guessing Ben has a lot of expertise with this, so I will probably ask him where to put my hands. <laughs> um, like, I know as a ranger, to... she would be good at it, but he's probably better. He's like, uh, I'll just be kind of watching like, whoa, whoa, watch out. That, that brick looks... So it's about 30 uh, feet so up, sturdy. so 36 damage, so Ooh, no big deal. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that's it's a, it's a D100. I, I guess 100. this is one I know if I fail it, so you don't have to roll it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can roll this, yeah. Here's where I roll high, but uh, 38, oh, nice. that's... Whew. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you. I don't know how much of a penalty it is, but ninety is my base chance. Laura, you, you hold your hand up and you keep speaking Elvish, uh, and you know, again, it's very subtle. It's not like there's some magic shield. It's just sort of like as if the rain, the wind is is gently getting it off of you, um, and so you're able to see better, and uh, you make it um, into the upper keep. On the upper wall in a um a very fine hallway a um the, it's carpeted here uh there are um the trophies of hunts like bear skins and animal heads a large master bedroom chamber and um at this point um ben no no Sorry, Ben does the thiefy stuff. Alara does the the uh, the elvish, elvy, elven stuff. This is where it's good to have her here, for for what you what you know what you were saying, because Alara roll a d six, and I'll say this works on a one to a three. Okay. Nice. Yes. Um, you hear somebody going through stuff. And they don't notice you. I'm going to quietly gesture and point to Ben that I hear something from over there. Okay. I also can hear noises on a one to three. But, uh, yeah. One of the things I'm leaning into that, yeah, that I, better. I've, yeah. I've loved from like white box OD and D is this idea of like, it's, it's a hyper role playing game where you have these big archetypes so if it's an elfy thing yeah. the elf does it if it's a thiefy thing the thief does it makes and in that way i'm not as constrained to all these mechanical numbers it's just more like you know we'll see if you can do it and then i dig you know, it yeah well and it would make sense too once i point out the noise he then would I, automatically tune into what it was oh, yeah, and you be can, like, right. oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. you're so the he first point that like, you pointed out. And then like, oh, yeah. yeah Whether it's paperwork you. or dropping things. All right, so is there a door? Uh, you're in this hallway. You can see, uh, you can even see into the master bedroom, like I said, uh, seeing the, the, the things mounted on the wall, seeing the master, the master bed, uh, 
against the main wall. Uh, these are the stairs that spiral down, down below where you saw the door that's guarded. And you hear somebody rifling through stuff in this room. There's no door or anything. So I wonder if I could sneak up on him with moving silently and if backstab could do uh, subdual damage to try and conk him out. It'll, it'll automatically work if you succeed, but it's you, you know how likely it is to do move silently. So Yeah, not very successful, but it's a 35, so even that 38 would have been a fail last time. But... Yeah, and it, you'll just knock him out if this works. If it yeah. fails, then they'll know you're here. Yeah. You know, see me sneaking up behind him like, oh, hi. Nope. Um, you try to do that, and you make it to this hooded figure uh, that turns around and meets Alara's blade that parries and, and prevents your instant death. As you see, um, you see once again the thief Vindlin, the master thief. I had a bad <laughs> feeling it was going to be her. <laughs> no, am I allowed to dual blade this and have like my sword in one hand and a dagger in the other? Uh, so yeah. kind of like meeting his blade, but also kind of like, no, I've got you. You need to knock it off. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll talk about that. I think in I think in BX, you just get a plus one, if I recall correctly. Um, I could be crazy, but I think that's the rule. Um First. And then the downside is that you're carrying two blades and you, you know, can only use certain blades and you can't have mm -hmm. a shield and blah, 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 blah. So maybe meanwhile, though, meanwhile, back with um, uh, Helmer and Nob and Tharnlin, uh, he's asking um, he's asking about uh, Brandon's fruit. He's very interested um, when you see Senor de Gallo, the Chamberlain. Make his way from a side room and come to the to the Baron. Whisper in the Baron's ear. You see bear, the Baron's face downcast. Look of deep concern. Clenches his jaw. He looks up and he says, I am so sorry to hear about Brandonsford and Helmer, what I wouldn't give to be again where you are, a knight horseback and blade in hand. It was a simpler world then. I'm sorry, but Griff's bluff cannot help you. Um, now, um, this happens right after the Chamberlain whispers something and then he begins to leave. Uh, and then, yeah, and then actually I'm going to pan back because we probably got to resolve this, this thief business right now. So, uh, so. yeah, what, um, master thief, huh? Working for the Chamberlain, I take it. Uh, yeah, she's, she's holding her blade up against the Laura's blade and, and, and she says, uh, she looks at both of you and smiles and she says, I already have what I need here. Well, is he pay well? Like, I don't know, 50 platinum worth? I seem <laughs> to recall. Ah. <laughs> well done. The money you owe me. I, I wouldn't say, oh, but I feel uh, I'm willing to say purchase goodwill so to speak <laughs> oh i'll have a lot more than that soon hmm. if we can't buy what you stole could we at least maybe purchase intel i think not i think i would rather stay in the good graces of my new employer rat bite ben you are a disgusting-looking specimen. You cost me a lot. Not just that bag of platinum, but it was my job to deal with the Shaggy Fur tribe. Well done. I don't know how you got rid of them. 
some sort of sorcery or artifice, no doubt. Well, I'm kind of curious how you plan to get rid of them. I mean, your 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 tricks didn't work as well, or you got there faster. Yeah. She uh, starts to back away. There's a there's a um, <clears throat> a, uh, a window here. You see that she's eyeing that. It will be very difficult to keep her from dashing out that window, and uh, mm -hmm. you don't know where it leads. You know, so certainly you could just dash out of it too, but you don't have the benefit of knowing what's below or where you're going, or if you'll, you know, if you have the. Am I able to chance. try to befriend her with a spell real quick, or do you have a better idea, Ben? Uh, if you got a spell that would work, but didn't we just use your spell? I mean, it doesn't matter if it doesn't work. She hates us anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. She won't, like, betray her very nature or anything, but you do have Charm Person. Um, what was mm -hmm. I going to say? Oh, yeah, I need to have the Thief chart. You could attempt to Charm her if that was something you want to try to do. I, I just warn you that it won't mean, like, sometimes when um, Edward charms people, they begin to think he's, like, their best friend or something, and especially in yeah. Swords and Wizardry when I do it. Uh, that's... I don't intend for it to always come across that way. I try to make magic more subtle. Uh, so I just think it would probably make her act differently. But that doesn't I mean I guess that... my goal with it would be to try to, at the very least, get intel. I don't think I'd be able to dissuade her from her employer or make her like Ben. It's just a matter of would she be able to... Would it make her tell us what she's doing and why? Yeah, right. Yeah, you could get things like that. Lure her into a uh, a monologue, the villainous monologue, right, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, co monologue, a complacent monologue, I yeah. guess, where she's more careless. But I don't have, I don't think she'd ever be like buddy buddy or betrayed the Chamberlain. Okay, so I, I'll I'll make this mechanical, so you know that what so you can make a decision, right? Um, if you fail, or I, and what what it would be is if um, if she passes, then she'll know that you're trying to use elven trickery. And she'll say as much and dash off and make it through the window, and that'll be that. Uh, she is holding something right now, and you, Alara, specifically noticed that. She claimed to have what she wants, and has what she wants, and she's holding something. Uh, now, if she's holding it loosely in her hand and it's held out, am I able to redirect my sword quick enough to catch her hand? Possibly. Maybe that's something the spell could help you do. You know, um, but I, I this is a master thief. She's a level nine thief. Or would Ooh. being able to use the spell give Ben enough time either way to assist? Like, even if she realizes what I did, would that be enough of a distraction for right. Ben to do something? Yeah, um, I, it will be. Uh, I'll, I'll come up with kind of the, the task resolution if you want to do that without the spell. But it would be very difficult to do without the spell. Uh, the spell, if you're trying to do that, uh, if you can think of a way to communicate this to Ben secretly and silently, if you can find a way to do that, then Ben can try to, you can get two checks if you use the spell, right? So the spell, if it works, then you can pull this off, period. If it fails, uh, and you can find, a, tell me a way to try to hint to Ben what you're trying to do. Then you'll get two checks. When Ben will get a chance, and you'll also get the spell. I might just drop a line um, out loud in front of Ben. Something about... Yeah, it was rather impressive how, you know, goblins were dealt with. Sometimes we make friends in strange places. Seeing as we charmed both tribes with a friendship charm. To see if he catches on. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, um, if you nod toward her ha her hand, or you you know find a way to kind of gesture that, being you get the like you see that she has that object. Um, all right. In that case, uh, how do you? What would you say that would come across as charming someone? Like you know, what would that what would that seem like? 
Um, probably with her, um, a bit of sarcastic flattery. Like, I must admit, you know, we rangers are a pretty tough group. And I have to admit, you know, I'm impressed that I've been matched by someone like you. Yeah, you can tell that uh, for um, for Vindlin, this is actually truly flattering. Because um, uh, it's true, you know, she's... I don't know, you weren't here... Were you here when the whole thing went down with her? I can't remember. No, I've been... never met her before. I've just heard of her from hearsay. Right. Yeah, so now she's face-to-face -face with an elven ranger. Uh, people that have their own reputation. Uh, I would also say that probably very subtly you need to say something in elven, which is like the actual the elvish magic that you have. Um, mm -hmm. She has to get a 10 or above. It's 50, 50 is her save versus spells at level nine. So here we go. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, ah! She's flattered, but um, so she, she knows that you're trying to trick her. That's the difference. Like she's like, she's heard of this before <laughs> and that leaves Ben one chance to get this object. Um, I'm going to leave it to a dexterity check at a plus two result. Meaning, you know, you would add plus two to your roll. Okay. Okay, so the plus two being a penalty to my dexterity? Exactly. And gotcha. meanwhile, she says, I've heard of your kind before. I'm impressed myself. It's very nice to actually meet an elven ranger. Meanwhile, you're trying to get this object out of her hand. Nope. Filled. Nope. And uh, she, you try to get the object, and she holds it back, and she says, maybe next time, Ben. And you actually see that she has the bag of platinum. And then she dashes out the window and jumps <laughs> out into the night. Wait, my bag of platinum? Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Master Thief. She rolls. <laughs> yeah, Master Thief. That's, that's like a... Uh, yeah. Heard about Does this mean place. she's done chasing you at least? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm not done chasing her. <laughs> <laughs> so, meanwhile, uh, that leaves, uh, that is a tough situation because uh, the Baron now uh, seems utterly convinced that he cannot help Brandonsford. Something the Chamberlain told him has convinced him of such. What do you do? Well, I don't uh, think we want to be caught here. No, nope. Yeah, you all probably leave, I assume. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're able to do I'm that gonna... without a check. You're able to, like, leave discreetly. Still kind of want to try and grab something worth something, though. Like, oh. went all through all this trouble. I can't not go. I can't go empty handed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? Let me see what uh, is up here that you might be able to get. Um, <laughs> Your consolation prize. Mm -hmm. I mean... Chamberlain mm -hmm. Steve must have really robbed that bear and bad, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so that's an interesting thought. I will say this is a neutral action, which you are neutral, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you can just steal from him. Um and uh, there are a number of expensive objects. One, you could actually try to break into his own uh, chest of valuables that has, like, family heirlooms that would be immensely, ex you know, uh, valuable. Uh, you could also take... Um, you could take things like his... Um, there's a... a his uh, study... Um, where there are, uh, it has, what do you call it? His, uh, signet. Um, uh, mm -hmm. so you could, and I'll say that this will take a round, whatever you choose to do right now. Mm -hmm. And along with the signet, you could take things like, you know, the other stuff that you could try to forge documents with. Um, and what else would be in here? I mean, that, that would, I would be thinking more practical. My first thought was like, so you see stuff for forging documents, I'd want that. And anything that would potentially be incriminating, um, which I know won't be right in the open. So I wouldn't necessarily be looking for just like the 
you know, gold candlestick kind of stuff. I'd be looking for stuff that seems like might be potentially useful later. So if he has like a, I don't know, like a nightstand or anything that might have personal effects in it, I'd be just quick search through there, grab a signature and then any sort of papers or anything like that. Do you tell Laura that you're going to try to rush to find something that is uh, incriminating to try to... Yeah, I was like, okay, I, I don't want, I can't let this be a p- total bust. I'm just going to check for some stuff. I'll be as fast as I can. All right, Alara, you can do this too if you want to help, but it would be a D6, and it's whatever the search check is for you, which I think both of you, it's one to two range. Or maybe one to three now. I don't know. Whatever it is for you at this level. Um, if it's here, uh, here noises, I don't know what the actual search check would be, but. Here uh, noise is one to three. But. I'll say it's one. So I'll give it a 50% chance on a D6 for both of you to try to find something that, you know, is interesting. If you don't succeed, you're not going to find something interesting. Nope. All right. So you both. Nope. You both. Find, nope. He seems pretty squeaky right. clean so far as you're searching through stuff. Now, this takes one round. Yeah. Um, and uh, you probably have. Well, you don't know. And actually, I'm going to roll to... And so you're not going to know if somebody's coming, when they're coming. Let me see. Go full uh, chaotic and steal as many left shoes as you can get your hands on. <laughs> <laughs> Fairies! <laughs> and every right sock. Yeah. <laughs> and shift all his hat slightly to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, since, um, since Alara's primary goal up here was to A, stop the thief, and B, she's trying to get intel for the rangers, I'm going to say she's probably going to act as lookout now, since my primary goal didn't work out. All right. That automatically And then if Ben works. wants to continue, he can. And if he doesn't, at least, well. I assume that you're looking out on, like, the staircase leading up. Is that where you're looking? Um, I'm guessing the door to that is closed, or did we leave it open? It is, is doesn't door? have a door, actually, from where it is. Um, so I would probably be listening, because footsteps would echo up a stone Yeah, I run for a second, I'll be right back. And give us a chance to leave before they're in line of sight. It, um, you know that within, you have one more round, uh, and someone's actually coming to investigate the ring. You have one round left to do something. Um, so you could do like one thing and then you have to get out of here. And getting out of here, you could go back out the window and no one will notice you. Like you can get down the wall and you don't have to do a check. Okay. Since you listened, then Ben can only do one thing. Since he left um, and since he has a free round... Uh, do you think he should either look for more incriminating documents, or do you think he should steal things to to forge documents, or steal other items? I'm trying to think what's most in line with his character. If I had to guess, I would say incriminating documents are most important because you need the leverage right now. Like that's the, like the desperate. Okay gambit right so he has to get yeah. a one through a three on a d6 so i'll roll that and he fails unfortunately ah. time has run out and unless you want to be seen now we're out the to, window yeah all right so you all <laughs> you all go back out to out the window uh empty-handed it has been a uh, a bust um most unfortunately meanwhile though we do know who is in league with the um Chamberlain, so there's a little bit of intel anyway. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, back in, at the audience with the Baron, uh, also seems like it's a failure. Um, uh, the Baron, utterly convinced that he can't help you. Um, you don't think you would be able to reason him, you know, to something, he knows something that he's not sharing that um, that he's not willing to, uh, he's not willing to help via reason alone, or an appeal to yeah. Okay. As he, uh, as, I, as as Homer sees the look on his face, he says, "Yes, no, I understand, Baron. You you have many, many things upon your uh, your responsibilities. 
Uh, but I... Sp forgive my boldness, but I do see concern upon your face. Uh, is there anything we may do to, to serve you? Uh, it is our duty in this place. Uh, <laughs> I was using the wrong term. I need to read more medieval books. I'm getting mixed up. Obviously, a courtesan is a pop prostitute. <laughs> so you're not courtesans. Um, you're courtier, courtiers. Cor <laughs> how, how do you pronounce <laughs> it? I think you got it right. Courtier, yeah. Um, uh, so anyways, uh, um, one of the other courtiers steps up... Uh, you know, uh, that had heard Edward's whole thing and is like, uh, it's, it's true. Lord Baron. These, uh, these are the people that, uh, stopped the goblins of, of the shaggy fur goblin raiders and saved, uh, the villages of the hinterlands. And, um, uh, the Baron is like incredible. Uh, you also helped my people in the hinterlands. I am, I'm, I'm most grateful. Uh, I think uh, you should know, Sir Helmer, that I will vouch for you personally to become a full knight. You should know that, uh, regardless of what we're able to do for Brandonsford. But for helping Griff's Bluff, I tell you what. Yes. If you're willing to be under my employ, that would be of great help to me, and I... I appreciate it greatly. Could you come to a private audience with me at dinner in two days' time? He bows deeply. A, you honor me. Yeah, you honor and, us all. Uh, Nob, who looks like devastated that like no one will help his people. Um, uh, the uh, the Baron is like he says. Um, he says. It is such a pleasure to meet you, uh, Thane Boulderhill, and I hope that our people can come to an accord in the future, and I hope that we can live in peace and mutual defense of our lands. And Nob said, looks up at him defiantly and says, I would hope that too, Baron, and then bows. And um, your audience with the Baron is over. Uh, unsuccessfully. Yeah, sometimes you don't win. You did not stop the thief. Uh, you did not get anything from the Baron's chambers, and you did not get the, uh, the aid from the Baron. Um. To the dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned that the Chamberlain is... Robin has is not to be trusted. But nothing we can do about it. <laughs> I think though that we did at least like it's a small win, but we at least know that Chamberlain is not to be trusted because of who he's in league with, and we know he has a powerful ally. So even we though we didn't get anything, that intel in and of itself could be beneficial to us. Yeah. Um, thought of something about. gold. Breath might bend as the, like a, as you're coming down and you see the Chamberlain. You should be like you know pat him on the shoulder and be like, really? Like I can't remember the woman's name, but like really, Master Thief, so and so, you really? can do so much better. And then just walk away. <laughs> she didn't seem to be your type. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Expected more from you. <laughs> what is going on with this? And then we can lead to the dwarves because that's a that's a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm having foundry issues now. It looks like. Don't worry. Come on. Huh. Well, that's unfortunate. Auto apply. I don't want to do that. Save. And then this and this. 
Hmm. Oh well. I wanted to add rain. I have rain. It's not working for some reason. Um. Okay. Yeah. But it is. Uh. It's hard to see outside, and the the rain is. Uh. It's stinging. Uh. From from how uh, intense it is. Um. And um. Uh. The winds uh, are almost knocking you over, and it's cold. Uh, so a rather miserable day to uh, to a failed uh, attempt to gain the aid of the peoples of Griff's Bluff. What do you do now? We should probably go drink. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I need, <laughs> no. I need to go drink and pickpocket somebody so I feel like a less of a failure. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> Go we'll drown our sorrows. The, the the weather is appropriate as we walk into the place. Would wet, there be a chance to, to try to pickpocket the Chamberlain on the way out? <laughs> I mean, Ooh, it's, like a, it's like a like I say, you, you can try anything once. You know, like uh... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I mean, I realize it's a bad idea. It's no. only a seventy. Well, I don't know if he's high level or not, but it's like thirty-five percent chance of success. But he only notices the attempt if I roll over a seventy, assuming he's not uh, over level five. And then it's like minus. And then I guess like a five percent penalty for every level over five or something. Mechanics. But. The uh, <laughs> you make it back to the Lone Watchman Inn to. Drink some of the swill to to dull your sorrows, and um, old Phil Dark comes by, um, and I believe you paid for a week, if I recall correctly. I'm and uh, pretty sure we did. He comes by and he he says, "Oh, what's the matter?" Then he puts some put some of his like watered down stuff on the table. He says. Uh, he says, I, looks at you all, I, you look sad, Ed. I tell you what, did, did you hear about what happened with the fire at that circus in Pomperberg? No? Homer looked at him like... <laughs> I heard it was intense! <laughs> and then he like, he walks off. <laughs> That's it, welcome back to the... <laughs> Just <laughs> add insult to injury. Huh? Yeah, it's worse now. <laughs> well, did you hear about the Mobius strip who uh, had walked into the bar? No. Well, he had walked into the bar and he was looking so sad. And the bartender asked him, "You know, why do you look look so sad?" And he's like, "I don't know where I where I don't know where to begin." Um, be a strip. I don't know where to begin. <laughs> where do I begin? That's a nice physics then, one. That's a nice physics one. Barkeeper was like, "This this whole conversation seems pretty one sided." <laughs> I just feel like we just keep it keeps looping back on itself. This is an entirely <laughs> circular argument. Anyways, <laughs> uh, moving on. <laughs> yes. Um, as, as you're sitting here, uh, you see a familiar figure in the corner. Is it a master thief? It is. Vinland is here. She raises a toast to you from the corner. Their feet up. Kicks. Raise it back. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. We should just go sit with her. <laughs> yeah, just like, I'm totally like, just right, just pull like, up a chair and like sit and have a seat next to yeah, her. Not even but, like you know, any witty banter or anything like that. Just to be like, oh. <laughs> just, just go hang like, out. Okay, like, you won this one, we'll agree. Can we just like yeah, drink off like, duty? Yeah, after yeah, work. Like, yeah. Can I buy you a drink? <laughs> And I'll yeah. just, like, give me the crappiest thing you have. <laughs> the worse, the better. Has it been Make sitting it out? <laughs> um, Preferably something room temperature with no foam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, uh, she, there's a, a woman that comes and sits with her. She laughs with her a little bit. You come over and she says, ah, oh, my friends. Rough day then, eh? It's been a long one. You, you win some, you lose. 
Indeed. Tom just goes, yes. It's <laughs> I still must say, even after our exchange earlier, I'm even more impressed. Well, we may not always be on the same side. You are definitely someone to be reckoned with. Homer pipes up. What did I miss? Oh, she's working against the Baron, or under my, you know. <laughs> oh. You should be okay, careful yes, saying yes. things like that around on the streets, Ben. You know, they accuse people of being traitors around here a lot. So I've later. heard. So I've heard. Seems to be going around. Yes, every week they bring people out into the city square and hang them in front of everyone. So I think those yeah. accusations are, you have to be very careful about them, I think. That seems to be a common theme for human towns. You're not wrong. It's true. Yes, we do a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> the the hobbits it's... and the dwarf look really uncomfortable. They look all the more uncomfortable <laughs> sitting with their their mortal enemy. Um, coming to know, you know, this this human business is not for them. Um, <clears throat> I can just imagine that, like. Wait, what? What? Are, what's going on here? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> are, we, are we friends? Or yeah. like what? <laughs> As Squin says that he's like, are, "Are we friends now? What? I don't understand what's happening. Can somebody uh, help me?" Helmer leans in. We're on break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Well, let's get some food. That actually, that makes sense to a Hobbit. Actually. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Ah, the person that sits next to her. Uh, uh, she says, uh, uh, hello, my name's Karen. Uh, wh what are your names? I'm Helmer of Westernell from over yonder. Oh, Westernell. Yeah, over, over that, over yonder. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's the one. Yeah. Uh, and your names? No? Oh, well. Uh, and who? Oh, I'm, well, these are... <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I actually am from Lesterland myself. Um, you know, a ways off that way, away from the evening lands, I think. Let me look here real quick. Lesterland. Yes, Westerland is, um, well, you've heard of Westerland. I believe it's a, um, I believe Westerland is a nasty place. Yeah, that's the one that's terrible and... I'm horrible. I gotta find my notes here. I've actually got something <laughs> written down. Too many notes. Um, the last supposed point of civilization before one comes to the miserable Wreckers Coast, uh, a haven of criminals and pirates. Wester Boss Westerland is a place of poverty, crime, and corruption. Crumbling buildings and potholed streets, gaudy mansions, and raucous taverns. And uh, it's not in the evening lands, but it's uh, further out in the Fessel Mark. So, anyways, uh, but she looks like a simple woman in a simple dress, just, um, you know, and, and she claims uh, that she's from Westerland, but she's just. Um, uh, she's taken some work here in Griff's Bluff, and she says, "My friend here says that she'll she'll teach me to play some dice. I, I've never played dice before. Have do you all play dice? Do you know how?" No. Oh. <laughs> uh, and and she looks at Ben. Do, do you know how to play dice? Oh, internet problems, probably. What about um, uh, Alara? She looks at Alara. Do, do you know how to play dice? Anyone? I've Sorry, seen no, some games. I'm partial to <sighs> cards myself, but... All right. Um, I, uh, I'm going to make, I'm gonna make, make up a dice game. As uh, as she's she's asking like, oh, do you play dice? Do you play dice? Helmer's kind of doing that kind of like side look, like that, like really, really looking at uh, yeah. <laughs> the thief woman, looking at her like, yeah, tap she, on the nose, like yeah, uh huh. She's like, well, uh, uh, she's going to show me how to play. Uh, so, 
Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Now, is it... Are, are you cheating her? It's like, or is she really good? <laughs> is that, that seems the, the next... Is, a, is that what a, a master is known for, is set to do? Let's see. She holds. And two. And she busts. And so the uh, the woman Karen, she looks at at it and she says, and they play around, you know, in front of you. And Karen wins. She's like, "That's great. That was a lot of fun." Oh, it doesn't seem that hard. And she wins the first uh, first round. Takes uh, takes some some silver pennies from uh, uh, from um, Vindlin. And anyways, uh, Vindlin, she's like, so. Um, I suppose you're probably not going to tell me, but you're probably not going to get very much good work here. I hear things didn't go well for Sister Greta, which I uh, observed was your uh, employer of sorts. Oh, Sister Greta, I mean, we're, we're acquainted. What have you heard about her? Caravan was knocked over. She's probably dead. Hmm. Where'd that oh, happen? Would, like like mid mid drink, and he just kind of stops, and he's looking, kind of leans in. Yeah, about halfway along the uh, the long road of the Long River West to uh, Ribic. Uh, my understand is uh, their caravan came under attack, and no one's heard from them. They did find the patrols in the hinterlands found uh, just found wreckage. Hmm. Seems the Church of the Thrice Blessed has a, a th the throne of a, a pontiff now sitting entirely vacant for the first time in 800 years. Yeah, Hel Helmer's taken it back. He doesn't know what to do with this information. He's like, he's like half like, I don't believe you, but also, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So the, did the, the Chamberlain notify you of this? Or we're just curious where your sources are. I'm not I mean, well, professional interest. I'm not going to answer that question, but I'll give you a question. So yes. I'll give you a question and I don't expect it to be answered either. Where are your sources? Got my ears right here. That's about all I got, really. <laughs> Here's Mine ground, should be that sort quite obvious as to who my sources are. Indeed, uh, though it <laughs> seems that um, it seems that you your kind fairly travel or, or, or rarely travel south, um, and in that way you yourselves know very little. I, if you'll all, allow me to offer some advice, developing some sources could be a good idea in these parts. It's helpful not to need to be everywhere at once. That way you can appear to be so. Got six. That does seem to be good advice. Something I shall consider. It is part of why I have ventured out. They keep playing dice as you all are chatting, uh, and you see that they tie in the second round and raise, uh, and it gets up to a gold piece. And then she busts in the second round, uh, and uh, Karen is like, oh, such good beginner's luck, and she takes a gold piece in the second round. Go no further, girl. Go no further. <laughs> she will chew you alive. Um, I'm guessing we're sitting a little space from the Master Thief, correct? Yeah. 
Because I don't want to be sitting right next to her, but I'm probably going to just check things from time to time. <laughs> check your stuff. <laughs> I don't trust her. I, I trust no, Ben. No. I don't trust her. Check your pockets Especially regularly. after what she yeah. pulled. And I'm keeping her over there. Um, speaking of which... <laughs> Um, she actually, she does, so she's like, oh, I'm having terrible luck today myself. And she pulls out the ring that you, uh, Ben, that you have, and she's like, this ring. And she puts it on the table, and she just slides it back towards you. She's like, this is, a. this is an odd object. Do you notice Where do you the find such things? Hmm. Interesting, you, you get that. Yeah, you, you could sit, find things like this just lying around. Um, and it, it's strange uh, <laughs> times like this, where you can you can you can find things like that. Um, but you know, these are strange times in general. Uh, the inscription on it it forms a magical field of some kind. There's a dwomer to the ring. I'd be careful with that ring. Good to know. I mean, why would you be handing out such things if they got, you know, getting, I can't imagine where you would find <laughs> such a thing. You're just giving away like candy, apparently. You have a pocket full of those things? I'm a generous person. Ooh. And, uh, let's see No, here. pretty tell me I uh, get more information. I it is not a question of employer or anything that would contradict them or betray them in any way. Simply a curiosity whether you have heard of or seen with your own eyes unusual happenings nearby or in your, your travels nearby. Things that are cursed are not what they should be. While they're chatting, she actually um, busts on a third round. Um... And they've raised it up to two gold pieces. And so Karen now has uh, two gold pieces and uh, a few silver pennies. Three silver pennies. And she's like, ah, just having a terrible time today. Uh, you could live off that, girl. <laughs> Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she says, uh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, she's you, what? <laughs> no, it's good. What you asked um, about strange things that are going on? What she's heard? Yeah, if she has either heard of or seen in her travels strange things or cursed things. I guess my intent here is to figure out as we travel out from here if there's areas to avoid or if we sh should be prepared to deal with something nearby. And to figure out how it spread. Absolutely. Um, you're mistaken. I do not work for, well, anyone here. I'm more of a... My own private entity. A private enterprise. And my work here is done. And my pay is complete. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this pay. I'm leaving the Evening Lands. Because this place is cursed. And that's why I had to take this job. I don't think there's going to be any good work like this in this place for a long time. My goal is to head south. Not just Rebic, but to keep going. Oh, don't stop at Rebic. Yes, keep going. Oh, yes. Yeah, Rebic. <laughs> two, two, two people walk by and they hear Rebic too and they see you spit and they both just go... <laughs> You don't even know who they are. <laughs> they just keep walking. Yeah. And, he, and, and yeah, he's like, yeah, see? <laughs> um, she's like, yes, I I, uh, I plan to just make it past Rebic and to keep going south. I've, I've heard um, that further to the southwest there are uh, isolated countries. Um, places that haven't been seen or heard from since the Empire fell a long ago. Maybe I'll even retire young. But either way, they say that there are barbarian tribes far to the west. 
But I'll take my chances with that versus what's coming from the east. And the Pilgrim's Road right now. People are disappearing. Goblins are always a portent for war. And then you have this petty civil war between these two little city-states that have grudges that should have been forgotten long ago. If you ask me, this is no place for adventure anymore. Hard to argue with that. I don't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can definitely see why you took this job and cannot say that in the same place I would not do the same thing. Honestly, well... Look. <laughs> I, I, I think it's been no secret that I haven't had exactly the best... Well, you know. You can't say I blame you. I'll just... I know that we've had our differences and I understand that you don't trust me but trust is a funny thing um, it's something more like you have to know a person to trust them and I've seen what you're capable of come with me leave this place uh, no offense Master Hobbit and then Nob is like no I will take offense miss these are, are my companions, and never mind that, two of them are eldermen of my city. And then she just smiles and she says, You think the big people are eldermen? You think they take your city seriously? Probably Edward responds to that. I'll have you know, miss, that in fact I do take it very seriously indeed. I have to say, well... If it weren't for my my companions here, I might find your offer tempting. I have to agree with Edward, and uh, I take this fine Hobbit's city or home much more seriously than I take. And I just kind of look around. Present. No offense, Helmer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> climbs, so to speak. This is Can't last say year here. The people I've I've met since coming to Griff's Bluff have really uh, been anywhere as well. They they just aren't the good, fine, upstanding hobbits that you'll find in Brandsford. And uh, have to, if I have to say, if I had to take one or the other, there's no real choice. No, I, just, I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I take no offense to this, for I have to say, I'm all, all our pains so far have been for these fine hobbits. Uh, and with pleasure, and we will continue. Uh, Thane beams, like visibly, um, with uh, friendship and happiness when, when you all say these things. Um, and she, she just smirks, and she's, she says, um, Well... She starts to stand up, and she uh, she she says, "I um, <clears throat> guess I might as well cash out then." But there's one thing, Karen. Um, and she takes a knife and she like slashes uh, something in front of Karen. And uh, Karen has been holding uh, dice to add. So this game is kind of like blackjack, but with dice. And she's been holding dice, right? And uh, they clatter on the floor, and uh, and so uh, she doesn't even say anything. Uh, Vindland just says, uh, just take takes the money, just takes takes Karen's purse bag, uh, coin purse, just takes all of it, and it's like that was fun, and I, I I genuinely wish you all the best. Be careful, and she just walks away. Walks out into the when, storm. When she does the thing with the dice, Helmer goes, "Ah!" <laughs> like, like, yes, yes, I, I knew it. Something was up. <laughs> and then he raises a glass to her, and he shouts as, as she leaves, "You could come with us." She turns around for a moment, and then she just shakes her head a little bit and goes out into the roaring winds. She'd rather die alone, you know. As a criminal making making <laughs> gold and glory than she would, you know, trying to die a hero. And um Shoot yourself. <laughs> yeah. Karen meanwhile, she's like anybody else up for a game? 
Mm. Elmer buys her a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Have to say, can't say. I mean, there's a reason I didn't join in the first place. <laughs> poor, poor effort, girl. Poor effort. <laughs> the, I was uh, rooting for you. Well played. The the night passes. I'm gonna see if the weather improves. Um, I say hi to him. What? <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> the night passes. Oh. <laughs> um, I apologize. Sir. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> this is really cool to me. Only Alara knows this. Um, and actually, let me change everything here. So, uh, the weather does change. Um, finally, is everyone, you know, you take your, your rooms at the the Lone Watchman in for the night. Um, uh, the winds pick up, but the rains stop. And um, let me see here. Hmm. Let me see if this does it. I feel like that's a little too jaunty. That's a little too ominous. So <laughs> nothing. I, I need to I need to update this. I, 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 I don't know where my, my music is. Okay. <clears throat> so Nothing is better than boss music. We'll take that. <laughs> yeah, no boss <laughs> music. Bum, right? bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this one. No. Okay, so the wind is howling outside the tavern at night. Um, Alara, you probably don't sleep uh, exactly. You probably, like, um, spend time and contemplation studying this like listening to the star you do all sorts of things um you it's almost like you have two existences right like you put on an existence for the humans to not make them feel utterly uncomfortable when they're around you and then you have an entire elven existence that is completely alien to that um that is your your true kind of home and who you are and and what you came from as as a person and um so only you sense this, that uh, tonight on the winds, a um, there is something in the wind that connects to the to the lay of this place, and uh, you've heard of this called a whispering wind, and uh, it is. Uh, I think the way I imagine elven magic is that. It's there. It is a there is a naturalism to elven magic where it's not just that you have command of some kind of scientific mechanism. It's that you understand the way the world works, and so you can naturally do things that a human can't, uh, like being able to hear and being able to sense where along a, ca a, a castle wall the rain would not hit so hard. You know, you're able to listen to things that humans can't see and hear, right? And so you've heard of this. It's called a whispering wind. Uh, and in the wind of, of the night, um, you know that in winds like this, you can actually whisper a message into the wind to send to someone. And there's a chance that it could be carried to them. Now, would that be something I would share with a group, or? I don't think they would understand. They would be like, oh, okay. you know, like elf magic. Oh, you know, like, by comparison, like, you know, you're like hundreds of years old. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I'm guessing there's she some would... things they're just not going to get, you know? I'm guessing she would probably go outside just to see if there are any messages. I guess sort of like checking your answering machine. It's a good, it's a good point. The elf <laughs> answering machine, which is the wind itself. There are no messages upon the wind for you, Alara. 
and there and you don't have to do this. Uh, you can also do mm-hmm. things like give a message to the nearest forest. Um, you know, to say please help me when I need it or something like it can be something not just. So I could human. actually talk to the trees or different things. Sort of, right? Like, um, but the trees speak in long songs that last and, and, and only very slowly go, right? Like, the trees don't change for generations. So, um, uh, but yeah, you, you as an Aine Norne elf, you ha- you were in tune with the stars and the winds and, and things, and you could, you could try to speak to them or, or, you know, but it's up to you, you know, like if you want to try to play with this, this thing, this, with this weird magic wind. Am I able to ascertain, use it to ascertain if what happened with sister Greta actually occurred? You could, you could sing an elven song to be carried to, uh, uh, to be carried to who, well, let me ask you this. What thing in nature would care that a battle of humans took place. Vultures. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, 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 you say, you know, like did, did the, um, you sing an elven songs that, that sort of says the, um, the, the, cal- did this calamity benefit you, you know, all vultures. And, um, you'll know if you go there and there are, um, if there are vultures overhead, uh, then you'll have lured them in a slight elven lie that they could feed more. Right. But so the question is, did, did she die? It it has to be a simple question, right? It has to be something. Oh, so what what is the um, what is it that you would ask them? I would probably ask if Sister Greta survived. Yeah, you could do that. Or, so if if you go there and they don't and they gather overhead, you'll know she's dead. And it will be a portent that one of you might die soon. But if you go there oh, and lovely. they are not circling overhead, then she's not dead. At least not to their knowledge. So, but if we go there and she's dead, then I could accidentally like um, cause bad luck for one of the group. Oh yeah, because everything is is omen and song. You know, nothing nothing is without meaning. <laughs> so everything is tied into everything else. Um. Anyways, and you don't have to go there. Um. Anyways, uh, yeah, the whispering the whispering winds come by, and you you sing this song to the winds uh, to to be carried to the to the carrion birds there to the west. And um, it heats up through the night, and everything settles. The winds eventually calm down, uh, and it becomes um, a heavy, thick fog obscuration uh, that covers everything um, the next day. So, uh, that is what you awaken to in the tavern on your... Uh, where's my notes? They're gone. Oh, on the probably the master thief took them. <laughs> yes, uh, on the disease to do that. Twenty sixth day <laughs> in the evening lands, the tenth of good month. Um, what is the plan? What do you What do you think? Uh, what What do you do now? Well, well I think, everybody, I think uh, are we done with Griswold? <laughs> I think. Because, like, we've got a potential like we... audience with the Baron, but, I mean, like, yeah, I, mean, I don't guess... Don't you have we... a meeting in two days with him or something? Is it I all mean... of us or just one of us? Yeah, was it just uh, Helmer that has dinner? So it's or all of you, you know, you can, yeah. you can all go. And it's basically to, you know, seek his favor and, and stay close to him because, right, that's my understanding what you're trying to do. Yeah, um, I'm just thinking, like, is that... Because we can just send an excuse to be like, hey, you know what? I died. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, like, really anything. So, I mean. I am regret to inform 
dead. Yeah. <laughs> I have acquired the dead. <laughs> Come down with the plague. It's quite horrible. Be fine. It's my second time this year. Um, yeah, I guess we just kind of head to the dwarves. I think that's what our backup plan was. Do we want to investigate Sister Greta's death? Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. That's that's uh, immediately I forgot. Mean, um the, with all the Rebic intrigue, and it's the, the she was the head what? of the. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. What? The, <laughs> the, the music stops, and people seem like they're freaking out outside. Record scratch. Well, I think I think we have our next. Helmer gets up and quickly runs outside with okay. his sword and uh, you, ready. Yeah, you you go outside. Let me um. Oh, excuse me, I have to take this. <laughs> you, uh, you go outside. This is too peaceful. We need something not peaceful. This is peaceful? Well, the, 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 mu- the, the music <laughs> and the... I wish I, I really do want to use that more, though. That is the vibe I'm going for. Um, anyways, you there's the rain. It's because it was not big and fat enough, but you see the rain now. Uh, but it's not rainy outside, and let me change this. Um, not rainy. Instead, it is very foggy. Um, so, <clears throat> come outside. It's foggy outside. Probably still a little bit dark, actually. Um, people are freaking out. And, um, dong, dong, the town bell's going off. And what you see being brought into the city center uh, and then sisters from the Church of the Fr- Christ Blessed and attendants are coming out to provide aid to soldiers, uh, including members of the Holy Order, that have died, um, and and some of them wounded. And there are probably, um, I think I said there are, how many of them are there? I think I said there were something like 12 or 20 or something. Knights of the Holy Order, basically paladins of the Church of the Thrice Blessed. Uh, it's clear to you that at least six of them are, are, are dead and being brought in. Uh, and then a bunch of wounded, many of which are, are guards of the, the militia of uh, Griff's Bluff. Right, Helmer runs up to uh, one of the less wounded looking ones and, uh, and it, it, it grasps his shoulder. Um, and, and, uh, so he's gonna, he's gonna do lay on hands, but he's gonna be like, like you, oh, look, you're, you're not, uh, you're, you're not as wounded as I suspected. Yeah. Um, and kind of like, like that, like, oh no, no, you're doing pretty right. good. That yeah. Kind of he thing, comes yeah? to and he's um, like, oh, 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 there, there were so many of them. So many of them. Yeah. What was it? What did you see? Goblins. Armies of them. There's so many goblins. They've overrun the Pilgrim's Road. Oof. Um. Are they coming this way? Yes. They're marching this way, to the west, towards Griff's Bluff now. We have to organize the city for defense. The villages, they have to come in. They have to leave the villages. How long do we have... A day How long do we have? At most. Which direction are they coming from? The east, by the Pilgrim's Road. They march on the Holy Road itself. They defile it. Let's see. It's just... This, this will be settled. This will be settled. Uh, and then... Uh, kind of... Uh, Helmer kind of gets everybody together and I, I think we need to head to um, uh, evacuate Brandonsford to, to head to the dwarves interesting yeah because if, if they're coming this way I mean if that's our kind of main thing that if they're heading west or to, to uh, yeah from the east on the pilgrims road we might have to do a uh less than triumphant return. And with that... How well are the walls built? 
Uh, are you talking about for Griff's Bluff? Yes. If everyone's coming here, are we talking about like a Helm's Deep situation or yes. are the walls pretty secure? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, yes, the walls are very secure. Uh, this is an extremely defensible position. And uh, it serves that purpose. Basically, um, uh, riders are probably being sent out to the surrounding villages to say, get your stuff and get in the village, get in Griff's Bluff now. Because that's, that's its purpose, is it's on this bluff and it's surrounded by walls and castles and guards and, you know, has an army in, in its own right, you know. So they will certainly button up uh, for a siege against uh, the goblins, you know. Uh, and that's actually where I'll end the session, and that way we can get uh, Chris on board next time.